Hi, so this is a video I've been meaning to do for a really long time, but I knew it was a video that would take me probably a super long time to edit and put together, so I've been putting it off, but today is finally the day that I'm filming it, and this is going to be my watercolor and um, gouache palette collection. So I have several palettes to show you, I think there's about ten, and also other materials like watercolor crayons and pencils I have in here. And these are all things that I've collected over the past, like, I don't know, the first palette here I think I got when I was eight. So the past, like, ten years or so. And, um, well, the past, like, I don't know, eight, eight to ten years. And I think that some of these, some of these are, like, super, super cheap watercolors. Some of them are nicer watercolors that I use now. And I'm going to be overlaying the swatch cards I've made over here during the video. So hopefully you can get an idea of the colors. Some of these won't be helpful at all because they're palettes I've made myself with various different brands that I don't even remember. And some of these are things that you could just go out and buy. And I'll put links to everything that I mentioned down in the description below. And I'm also going to show some examples of things I've made with the paints I'm talking about over here on this side of the screen. However, some of them are super old because I haven't used the palettes in a really long time. So, um... But not representative, maybe, of, like, exactly how you should be able to use these supplies. But they're alright, so I'll put them up there anyway. The first watercolor palette I have to show you, I actually have two of. And, um, it's made by the brand Simply Art. And you can see I got these at two different times because the stickers on the backs are, um, different. And I think this maybe was what, um like maybe kind of similar to Artist Loft that you get at Michael's. I'm pretty sure this is like the Joann's version of it though. So one of them doesn't even have a front on it anymore, this one. And it's a total mess because I spilled water on it and then later I let one of my little cousins use it for finger painting. So it's really a mess. <laughs> but um, this is actually a good palette for beginners. It comes with this plastic front and then you open it up and there are like 32 colors, 36 colors or something, um, and they look super bright, but they don't show up very pigmented at all, as you'll see over here on the swatch card, but they're, um, they're alright, they're good for, like, first starting out if you're just, like, little, little kids they're good for, because this is, whole thing is only, like, five dollars or something, um, they're okay, they're not really what I would recommend, but if you have really little children, like, I don't know, like, four or five year olds, maybe, like, three, four, five, that want to like paint and have a set then this might be good for that um they're they're good for um basic coloring in um for the price it's a good set but it's not something i'd recommend if you want to get super serious in watercolor and like color theory and that kind of thing because there's no like pigment information names on this and um i don't know they're okay they're good good for when i started i got them when i was like six or eight, six, seven, eight, like that age, and they were okay then, but I probably wouldn't buy one, um, now, just because it doesn't really work with the kind of art I do. This would be good for, like, people who like to art journal, you know, and people who aren't, like, super serious. Okay, the next watercolor set I have is one that I think is made by Artist Loft. It might be made by Simply Art. It doesn't have a label on it. But it's a similar looking set. It's higher quality plastic. I think it's the same price though. And I'm pretty sure this one came from Michael's. The cover doesn't want to stay on it very well. Again, it has this nice plastic area over here you could use for mixing. And it comes with less colors, but they're bigger pans. These are way more pigmented than the other ones. However, um, they tend to be more like chalky. And I think the newer versions of the palette I showed before this are this same paint. So, um, I, I don't know, like, like they, I'm pretty sure they are the same paint. So these are okay. And, um, I'll put a link down to, like, various versions of these two palettes down below, because I know there's multiple versions. And these are really nice. I let my other little cousins use this one, um, at a family reunion last summer, so a lot of the colors are kind of messed up, because that's the last time I used it, until I made the swatch card today. But, they're okay. Colors are good. Um, too many colors almost, I think. Like, I think if you want to get serious with watercolor, this isn't the palette you should start with. You should start with, like, a palette with some primary colors and some secondary colors, and that's it. This is a little overwhelming, but good for art journals, good for, good for starting out, good for kids. Generally good. You can make good art with any of these watercolor palettes. Um, 
I just, I think they're but suited for different audiences even though anyone could use them, I guess. Like, they're, they're all okay. They're just different, different ways I would use them. I don't know if that makes any sense. This palette is one that's going to be very unhelpful, and it's this little tiny Winsor & Newton palette. You've probably seen it. It looks like this. This is the palette I would recommend you use for beginners. I've glued a little swatch card on the back. Um, it just says Winsor & Newton. These are their Cotman watercolors, or at least that's what came in here originally. That's not what's in here now. Um, and I've refilled the white, both greens, the lemon yellow. Um, I've squirted some more um, golden yellow in here. Um, the purple and the ultramarine are refilled, so is the white, I think I already said that, and the red. So like, the only colors that are original in here are these two, this blue, this orange, and these two browns, um, the ochre and the burnt umber. But this is a really good palette, the original version of this, I'll link that down below. That's the one I would recommend for anyone who doesn't have it, anyone who's starting out with watercolors, even if you're a good um, professional with watercolors and you're looking for a good travel palette, this is a really, really good one. This is the one I'd recommend to everyone for starting out. It has a warm and cool version of each primary color. It has some good neutrals. It doesn't originally come with a purple, it comes with a burnt sienna, which is better, but since I do a lot of flowers, I, um, I just got paint on my fingers, sorry. I would, I put purple in there. But, it's, this is like the, my number one recommendation of a palette, and it's like $13 on Amazon. Um, you can get it at Joann's and Hobby Lobby and Michael's, but I'm pretty sure it's more there. Anyway, this is the one I would definitely recommend. I love this. Windsor Newton cotton paints are really good. I don't love the sap green in here, although it's definitely usable. Um, yeah, this is a good palette. I've just used the box because I really like it and I've refilled it. It also comes with a tiny little paintbrush, which I think is in one of my other boxes that I'll show you later. But 12 colors, good colors, good for learning color theory and mixing, just a generally good palette. I gotta start moving a little quickly or this video is gonna be like 40 minutes long. This is the Artist Loft Metallic Watercolor set. Um, these are annoying because as soon as you turn it upside down, all your paints fall out <laughs> and I haven't glued them in. But um, these are okay, good for art journaling. They're not pigmented at all and you really have to stir them up. But they are glittery, so like um, they're good for accents. You can't just do much with this on its own unless you're just doing lettering or something. But it has its place. It's all, again, only like $5, so I think it it's a good investment if you want some like accent -y colors without buying like those fine tech paints. Which I haven't tried. I'm sure those are nice, though. Alright, this next set was actually given to me by my grandma's neighbor. And I don't know where she got it. But it's really nice. Um, I'm not sure if you can buy any more. These are the Artista watercolors. They're just like a classroom, like very like elementary student grade of watercolors. It has 12, 12 colors? 8 colors in it. Um, they're really super pigmented, really nice actually, um, you, it has a nice mixing area up here. I've used this, like, traveling before and it works really well actually, so, um, <laughs> they're, it's a really nice palette and I would recommend it. I'll leave a link if I can find it. It's probably similar to those, like, praying or, like, it's not like the Crayolas. Crayolas tend to be more shiny. It's probably similar to the praying watercolors, although I don't have my own box of those. Alright, next, these are Prismacolor Premier Prismacolor Water Soluble Color Pencils. So these are watercolor pencils. They come in a nice little tin with a little plastic insert. 12 colors, um, good color selection. There's 12 nice colors. I never use them. Um, I think I've sharpened them each maybe once. So they're okay. Um, they're, they're really good watercolor pencils, I think, but I just never use watercolor pencils. So if you're a person who likes watercolor pencils, these are probably really good. I don't know, I'm just showing them because this is a collection video and this is something that I have in my collection. Next, this is one I would totally recommend. This is like my recommendation under the Winsor & Newton palette. Um, you can do great things with this one as well. This is the Koi Pocket Travel Box palette. And there's another one of this too that has like 12 colors. This one has 24. They're both good. I don't have the 12 color one because I just bought this one on Amazon. Um, that's the one I saw, so I bought it. I have a little, like, swatch card up here. It opens up. It's nice, thick plastic. Like, really thick plastic, actually. So that's good. Um, it has a little, like, thumb thing on the back. So you can, like, hold it like a palette on your finger. I, I don't really know why. I never do that, but 
you can open it up, you can use it kind of as like an easel, although I don't usually do that because with watercolors that tends to drip I find. It has this little palette tray that you can stack over here so you have a lot of mixing area. It has sponges to clean your brushes. It came with a water brush and I've just stuck this little pencil from Ikea in here. Um, the water brush I'm going to show in my like art supply video because I'm going to make a, a big art supply video of all the current stuff I use. Um, it has some nice paints. I haven't used them a ton, although I have used them like a, a good amount, I guess. Um, I brought this on a couple trips with me. Uh, it's good. I don't use it that much anymore because the palette I use now is like a small palette, so I use it as a travel palette as well. But this is good, and people make amazing art with it. And I, I don't know. Like if I if I wasn't so set on like sticking to a certain palette because it's the one I know how to use, then this would definitely be one I would use more because it's good. Um, pigmented colors. They're not professional watercolors, but they are good student grade watercolors. There are better ones, there are worse ones. I like the setup of this box and the variety of colors, so I think it's a good set. Next, this is a large palette, and it's one I made, and I never use it anymore. It has a variety, well, at first when I made it, there's a video I will link in like a card, or I'll probably just link it in the description. Um, there's a video of this that I've made, and I filled it with these low Cornell watercolor tubes. And since then, I've refilled it with a few of these Walter Foster Chinese watercolors, and then a few of the Royal and Langnickel watercolors. These are actually really nice. Um, so are these, but I'm not sure where you can buy them. But this is what it looks like. A couple of the greens like to fall out. But it's just this big watercolor set. Um, I don't use it at all anymore. Um, this is something that I would maybe bring if I was like, when in the summer we go camping and I usually paint out of like the canoe or on the dock. This is something I would use for that because it closes up and like, I wouldn't really care if something happened to it if it fell in the pond, I guess, you know, like. My recording stopped, so anyway, I was saying it's good for like washes and backgrounds and that's about it. I've made good art with it, but I've found watercolors that I like better since, so I don't really use it anymore. But it's filled with some cheap watercolors. It's alright. I mean, the palette was also cheap. A lot of mixing area. Good spot for brushes. It's not my favorite, but it is nice, and um, I like the idea of making your own watercolor palette, so I think that's something that maybe you should give a try. It's fun. It's not that expensive if you buy cheap paints, and you have a lot of paint here, so if you like to do a lot of small paintings or an art journal, this is a good idea for you. I don't know. Like, it's, it's good for different things. Next we have this set of watercolor crayons. These are the Studio Series watercolor crayon set. I bought these at a bookstore when I was on a vacation once for like six dollars or something because I'd never seen, um, I'd seen watercolor crayons but I hadn't seen them in a store before. Like I'd just seen them like people like have pictures or something, you know, on Instagram. And these are actually really fun and I did a couple little drawings with them at the time. It was like three years ago when I got them and I haven't used them a lot since. But they are something fun to play around with. I think they they have their place. Like you can, they're fun to travel with. Um, you can draw things and then watercolor them later if you want. Um, good variety of colors. They'd be good for like kids. I think like middle, like elementary grade kids. Um, they're just they're okay. Like I mean, there's good and bad things about them. You can't apply a lot of watercolor techniques to them but they're fun to play with and I I don't regret buying them like I had a lot of fun with them and I still can do a lot of art with them. Next, this actually isn't watercolor at all. This is my gouache palette. I have a video on making it and it is filled with a variety of, well, two kinds of gouache. This Reeves gouache, which I've talked about in the past and how I didn't really like it, but since then I've figured out um, that I actually do like it if you if now that I know a way to use it, I, I found a way to use it and I like it. And it's also filled with this Artist Loft gouache. So this is what it looks like. It's just um, a Magello palette, watercolor palette. And the reason I like this one is because I use my tube gouache along with this palette gouache in here. And I like to squirt it out, I mean, onto this piece. And then you can take this plastic piece out to wash it, but it fits in here for painting. I also like that it's all on one side so you can close it, have it flat in your desk um, without worrying about paint spilling from the other side onto this, which is a thing I don't like about my other big white watercolor palette. Um, 
has 18 colors in it. They're nice paints. I mean, I just refill them every once in a while because you tend to use more gouache and less water so they run out quicker than watercolors would. I use this a lot in my sketchbook. Um, yeah, it's nice. It just has a little sticker on the back that has, like, my name and my phone number, although that's not my phone number anymore, so it's okay. Um, yeah, it's it's okay. It's alright. I, I use this gouache a lot. There is better gouache. I have not tried any better gouache than this because I don't have any money, but um, I do, I use this all the time, and it's like one of my favorite art supplies that I grab and stick in my bag when I go places. Um, travels well, good variety of colors, but not an overwhelming amount good mixing space. I would recommend this palette to use as a watercolor palette to fill as well. It's good. I like it. Alright, these last two palettes are kind of strange. They're like a combination of things. Um, this one is a Jane Davenport watercolor box palette, and I reviewed this a while ago, but that's not the paints that are in it. This has a variety of different paints. It has some Jane Davenport and some Prima colors, because I bought the Prima Tropical set recently. It also has some random little boxes, boxy colors, and it has this purple container that's filled with gouache, I think. So these are just some random extra colors. They're good colors, but they're just colors I have duplicates of, or these, these aren't really nice at all, and they're just in here because I needed a place to store them. So those are good paints, um, Prima and Jane Davenport, they're similar, similar paints. I think they might actually be made in the same place, but, um, those are just colors that I have doubles of or aren't colors that I use frequently enough to keep in this box. This box is my Prima watercolor box. It has a lot of mixing space, just like it's the same box as the Jane Davenport one, just a different color. And I like that it has a lot of mixing space. I've got colors over here right now. But it has a bunch of colors in it. Um, some of, most of them are Prima and Jane Davenport, as well as there's a, like six, I think, of the Winsor Newton, seven of the Winsor Newton Cotman colors in here as well. Um, some of them have been refilled with the Royal Langnickel paints, like the Sap Green, this Cerulean Blue, and this um, Lemon Yellow have been refilled. Oh, and so has the um, Ultramarine has been refilled too. Uh, and the white is, this is actually white gouache in here. So, the rest of these are just Winsor Newton um, and Prima paints, and this is the watercolor set that I use all the time. Um, these are the most pigmented watercolors I have. They're not professional, they're student grade, but these are this is just a variety of the nicest watercolors that I have and my favorite colors for mixes and things. And it's really small, good to travel with. I like that it's just a little, little tiny set, um, and it has, like... I don't know how many half pins in it, like 20, 27 or some half pins, 28, 26, I don't know. So it has a little thumb hole on the back too. I really like this set, it's my favorite. Um, I'd recommend the Prima and Jane Davenport and Cotman watercolors, as well as the Koi Travel watercolor set. Those are my biggest recommendations. Um, so those will be the, I'll link those down below for sure. And I think that's all I have to say for this video. Sorry if it wasn't very informative, it's mostly just like a collection video. But I hope it was helpful to someone and maybe gave you some ideas for um, watercolor sets that you could purchase if you're in the market for a new watercolor palette. And yeah, I think that's it. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you next time.